good. <laughs> All right. Assalamu alaikum. It's been uh, too long, actually, since I've been back to back to Seattle, Washington. The last time I was actually out here, I stopped by this masjid um, along with my brothers Hamza and Abbas, and also also had a special guest at that time, my younger brother, uh, my younger brother-in-law uh, Talalo, who um, he was not Muslim, but he came with us and he enjoyed the experience. So Alhamdulillah, that's a um, you know that's a testament to to the community here. But that was the last time, and we were driving through, driving through the country in a minivan, going around uh, different masjids uh, during the month of Ramadan. Um, went across uh, all over the country, and then afterwards we were able to go to Hajj. Man, that's kind of a while. I haven't been here since pre-Hajj. It seems like a lifetime ago. Um, but then afterwards we were able to go to Hajj, um, come back from Hajj safely. Alhamdulillah. Um, and then I was able to play for the Kansas City Chiefs for this past year, and that was a you know that was a, definitely a blessing. I have to say real quick, this is my son Jalal. So alhamdulillah, this is <laughs> this is this is his first time. This is his first time uh, being in Seattle in a, a very longer than me, I believe. So, but today I want to talk to you guys about uh, you know a little bit more deeply about myself, about the whole. You know, faith, family, and 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 football, and the first one starts with faith. You know, have, having having faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And if you go in any high school, any college, you look uh, weight rooms, you look at uh, T-shirts, they're going to have the three F: faith, family, football. Faith, family, football. You know, and it's and for us as Muslims. Our, our worship and our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that comes first before anything else because that's what's real. That's what's going to last eternally. So that's something that we have to continuously work on. And for myself, it was something that, you know, as I, as I started to get older, as I started to mature, I started to understand what it really meant to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to put him before things that I wanted personally, um, such as playing football or even, even, you know, fasting during the month of Ramadan, you know, it's, it's hundred degrees outside and we, we got training camp and I got to fast. It's like, man, some people are like, man, I, I ain't with all that. But for me, it's like, you know, I want to worship a lot the best way I can because I know that's something that's, that's lasting. Football is going to come and go. Um, whatever else you're into, it, it, it's going it's going to come and go. What what we do for the sake of Allah, that's going to be something that lasts with us for for an eternity. So that that's the one thing is worshiping Allah the way the way we're supposed to. And and the Khatib said today, you know, he said, what 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 have, what have we done to to earn paradise? And that's something that you know I I even look at myself and I'm like, man, I feel like I haven't done nothing. Like, so he's saying, what, what have we done to earn paradise? And we all, that's where we all want to go. That's what we all make du dua for. But how many of us really and truly say, you know what? I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do more. You know, there's tons of times where we need to go play basketball more because we want to be better. Or we want to go study more because we want to become a, uh, a better doctor. Or I, gotta, I go to practice more because I want to be a better football player. But how much... Um, you know, how much do we do more in worship or, like you said, taking care of an orphan or things like that to make the relationship lasting, you know? And then from, from, from that, when you start to develop a strong faith, you start to develop a certain character about yourself. You, you, know, you no longer allow little things to deviate you from, from, from the proper path. Because when, when, when your character isn't, isn't that strong, I mean, you'll, you'll fall for anything, regardless of what anybody tells you or, or regardless of what comes up or whatever is the new fad going on today in society. You're just going to jump right in. But when you can establish a strong character, that's, that's knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Whether you're out in public or whether you're at home by yourself. 
whether you're just hanging out with the boys or you're in front of your mom. Establishing a strong character comes from a strong faith. And then from, from having that strong character comes earned respect. When I, when, I, when I was younger and I'm telling people about Islam and different things like that, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, uh, well, you know, whatever, whatever, because maybe I'm telling them something, but I'm not practicing it to the best of my ability. So for me, as I started to develop a stronger faith and then a stronger character, then that respect level started to come in as well. So now I'm in the, I'm in the atmosphere where I work with, I mean, up until this point, all non-Muslims. Only, only time I've ever been around other Muslims is people in my family. That, that's, really, that's really it. So I work with people and some of them have never come in contact with the Muslim. So they look at me and they're like, I wonder what this dude is going to do. So with me having a stronger sense of faith, a stronger character, now they respect me. Like, man, this dude is going through training camp and he's fasting and I'm complaining about this. This guy can't eat or drink. Like, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. Or I'm wondering, I'm like, man, I got, I got to figure out a time to, 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 go, to, go, to go make door. I got to make door before practice. I go and I knock on my uh, DB coach's door. The guy's 70 years old, Hall of, Hall of Famer, uh, Emmett Thomas. And I was like, I was like hey, can I, can I use your room for five minutes? And he kind of looked at me like, what do you need my room for? Like, I got, I got to make salat. I got to pray. And it just like, it just blew his mind. In, in his 70 years of living, he's never seen prayer on a daily basis that important to someone. So now the respect level is completely different. He's like, man, I want to be like you. Now he starts praying when, when, when he can, and, or he's trying to read this and find out that. It changes people just from knowing who you are, just from kind of establishing yourself. And then we'll, we'll, move, we'll move into the, into the next one, which is, which, is, which is family. And once again, the Khatib talked about being dutiful to your parents. I mean, your parents take care of you when you can't do anything for yourself. They invest a lot in you, although you may not see it. Like when I was a little guy, I'm like, man, these dudes are just riding me. It's like they, all they do every day is figure out a new chore for me to do or a new something for me to write or to study. But really, they're investing a lot in you. They're investing their knowledge, their experiences. They're investing their time, their money, their effort. They're investing a whole lot in you. And before, I didn't used to see it. I probably started noticing it more later in my teenage years into my early 20s. But now that I'm a parent, you invest a lot in children. Like, you invest a whole lot in children. So being dutiful to your parents is a, you know, it's, it's a... It's something that a right that our parents have over us. So if there is anybody who, when their mother says something, you're talking back to your mom or you're talking back to your dad, or even when you walk away, you're whispering under your breath, you know, cut, cut it out. You know, they, they've done a lot for you. So you make sure you do what's right by your parents. And then, and then your siblings as well. You know, we don't, we, don't have, we, don't, we don't get a chance to choose who our family is. We're born into this world and Allah put those people in our lives. So when we, when we get that, we have to make sure we hold tight our, our relationships with our brothers and sisters, our aunties and, our, and uncles, our cousins. We have to make sure we uphold the, the, the ties of kinship. That's a duty upon the Muslim. And that's, that's your support group. The, the people in this master right here in this community, this is, this is, this is the support group. So when you come from a community, everybody's going to be like, man, I remember, I remember Hussein when he was this big and he was doing this and he used to come to the masjid. That's your support group. Those are the people that no matter what, when you go back, they're always going to be smiling. They're always going to pick you up. And those are people you can lean on in times of difficulty. So you have to be, you have to be right. You have to do right by people because the more, the more, you know, strong relationship you have, the more people will want you to succeed. 
And everybody in this room wants to be successful in this life and in the hereafter. All we have to do is help one another out. So don't be rude to people. Be nice. And by me being, um, being respectful, I have to learn how to be respectful. I mean, if you talk to my mom and my pops, they'll tell you a completely different story. But it took me a while to get it. But, but when I got it and I understood it, it was, um, it was something that just being respectful, I was able to pass through a lot of stages in life that other people pretty, uh, pretty much collapsed because at some point they'll just blow up. They'll just, they'll just lose it. So be respectful to others. Be respectful to, to your community because, you know, this is the, the, the support group. And then lastly, football. Um, football is something that I've done since I was 10 years old. And it's something that I've been a fan of since even before then. And sitting out a year was easy and difficult at the same time. It was easy because I said, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. And wherever Allah takes me, I'm fine with that. So the decision was smooth. The decision was, I mean, people would ask me, oh, you know, you're, you're only 27 years old. This is the prime of your career. You're turning down this much money. But for me, it was like, I'm going to Hodge. That's priceless. There's no amount of money here on this earth that can count for that Hodge. Because that Hodge, I mean, inshallah, it's accepted. That could get me an agenda. That, you know, that's, that's forever. So no amount of money can, you know, can make up for that hodge. It was a little difficult because when I returned, I'm working out to get back in shape. And I'm like, man, this is going to be an uphill battle. But and then even when I was getting back in shape and different things like that, I started to get discouraged. I started to get discouraged because I'm working out at the same facility as other guys that are working out. And these guys are getting signed left and right, and I'm not. And I'm like, man, I, I outplayed these guys when I was playing. Now that I'm working out, I'm way more in shape than these guys. These guys don't even take them as seriously as I do. So then I realized once again, you know what? It's, 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 it's out of my hands. I'm just, I'm just gonna continue to, to stay the course. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Allah steer the wheel. And you know, I'm, ju I'm, ju I'm just gonna keep going. Alhamdulillah, I got signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. And it was, even when I, when I went there for the workout, you know, I was kind of like, ah, let's, let's see how, how this goes. And as soon as I got done working out, the, the general manager came, came up to me and he talked to me about Hodge. How was it? How was this? How was that? Andy Reid came up and he talked to me. How was Mecca? Is Mecca this? Is Mecca that? My DB coach, the, uh, the guy I was telling you guys about, uh, Coach Thomas, he came up. He was like, are you, are you, are you going to be going back? Are you just going to disappear in the middle of the year or are you going to be here for the entire time? I was like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to be here. So everybody was just so fascinated with Hodge. And all through the year, they asked me questions about this and asked me questions about that. So there was a lot of good vibes from a lot of good people. And... Starting the season, getting back into it and going, and alhamdulillah, we were just, I mean, we was rolling. We was just win after win. It was like, for a while, we couldn't do anything wrong. And even when we did stuff wrong, it ended up being right. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was unheard of. And last year, one of the, one of the uh, most special moments for me, and I kind of didn't realize it, but at the same time, I kind of did. We were playing the um, Oakland Raiders, the, the first game. And I was, I was just excited because it's a rivalry game, right? It's like whenever, like, I'm, I'm, I'm from, I went to Washington State. So whenever I see that purple W you got on your jacket over there, you know, I get, I get fired up, right? So it's a rivalry game. So now that I'm, I'm on the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, whenever we see the Oakland Raiders come to town, it's a rivalry game. They showed us the history. You see people fighting in the 60s and 70s. You just see all kind of stuff. So it's like you go up. And then we went out there, and that's when the um, – the crowd, you know, they're trying to set the record for the loudest stadium. So we packed house like a hundred something thousand people. Everybody's going crazy. 
So I was like, I was like, man, this is gonna be a game. So I, I gotta like, this is you know, you get up for those games, and come uh, come fourth quarter, I was having a pretty decent game. Special teams, uh, spot defensive uh, duty. I had I had half of a sack. I thought I got there first, but Tom Tom wrapped him up. So I got uh, you know half of a sack earlier. But come fourth quarter, they're going two minute drill. I make uh, tight end makes a break. I undercut it, catch interception, 44 yards, I believe it was 44 yards, touchdown. First uh, defensive touchdown of my career. I haven't had one since I was in college. I had it against Stanford, though. Not, not you, Doug. It would have been nicer if it was against you, Doug. But, uh, but first uh, touchdown of my professional career. And at that moment when, when I got the interception, that's when they uh, they broke the record. That's when they set the record for the loudest. Uh, Cause everybody went crazy. So so they set the record for the loudest. I think Seattle beat it by now, though, right? I, but at the time, you know, they set the record. Um, but what, what 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 was really really cool about that was that happened on the day of Arafa. So the year before, on the day of Arafa, I'm standing there, you know, and I'm making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for everything and to, you know, just making dua, you know, the day of Arafa, you're standing from, from after dua to Maghrib, just, and you're just in constant dua, you know, constant praying. And a year later, and I'm, not even sure if I'm going to even come back to football. A year later, I'm catching the interception and running down the sideline for a touchdown, pretty much to put the game out of reach. That was, you know, that was that was that was amazing, and that's something that is is not from me. It's not anything that you know that I've done. It's it's all from Allah, and it just kind of goes back to when you put. Allah first and when you make that effort to put Allah first in your life and when you handle your responsibilities as you should as a Muslim throughout the course of your daily life whether it be with your spouse your parents your brothers and sisters your co-workers whomever it is you come to contact with Allah will reward you in this life inshallah we're all still you know waiting to see if we pass the test in the hereafter and inshallah we all did but in this life, you'll get the rewards in this life. So, you know, just, just from my experience over the last couple years, and um, I'll just say, make sure you put a lot, keep a lot first in your life. And, you know, as a Muslim, as a Muslim, develop that, develop that strong character, you know, that strong sense of character. And, um, and inshallah, everything would run smoothly. So that's, I mean, that's that's what I got. Zakla Khair, thank you guys for allowing me to, uh, you know, share that with you. I kind of, you know, I, w I would have liked to do it at a, at a better time, but I have prior engagements. I'm going to a Cougar function tonight, Cougar football function tonight. So there was, uh, so I, I, you know, Abdul Karim asked me if I could have did it later, but you know, I already have the the prior engagement, so. I know it would have been nicer at a different time, but alhamdulillah, I'm still thankful that you guys allowed me to speak today. Yeah. yeah, if anybody has some, uh, we can, we can, the, f the funnest part, some, some Q&A. Do you, do you have another microphone or do I, should I just repeat the question so everybody can hear? Oh, please sit right here. Okay, so, so the first question was, how much was my contract? Okay. Now, the, the, last, the last place I spoke at, I spoke at my daughter's Montessori school, um, what was that, on Wednesday, I believe? Wednesday or Thursday. And that was the first place that I ever been to when we asked questions that they did not ask me how much money did I make. So I thought that was pretty cool. But... If you really, if you really want to know, you can find out. I mean, it's public information. What would you do, like, if you're in the middle of a game but it's on that? What do you 
That's a good question. What do you do in the middle of the game? And, and it's a lot. That's something that I've struggled with, actually, because we have games that start at 12 o'clock. So we have a game that starts at 12 o'clock, but really we're probably there from 9 o'clock prepping for the game, and then it, it runs over. So for me, I, I mix a lot at the end of the game. Inshallah, I believe that with, or I'm in hopes that as generations kind of grow and there are more um, Muslim professional athletes, we'll be able, like Muslims will be able to take a break and make Salat when Salat is in, just like they're doing overseas. They, I mean, it's Salat time, they just, game got to stop. But there's a, you know, there's a, there's a need because there's a certain amount of uh, players. So inshallah in the future, that'll be something that's easily taken care of. Um, you know what? I've actually, I played against Marshawn Lynch in college because he went to Cal, went to Washington State. And since he was, actually in, since he was in Pop Warner. But, I mean, I started playing against him in college. He's, he's actually one of those people that he's just been better than everybody else. From from you know the time he's been playing, but I've tackled him. I mean, you still tackle him, just having to tackle him the whole game over and over and over. That's the that's the problem. Um, what do I think of Richard Sherman? I think that everything that he says, he backs it up, so he can say whatever he wants because he keeps backing it up. What was that? Seahawks. What 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 about Seahawks? <laughs> oh, what would I play for them? Yeah. <laughs> man, Seahawks secondary is solid, man. They don't they don't they don't need me. They got a bunch of talented guys, man. And, and a lot of guys that, that I know over there, so they're they're fine, man. They're doing good. No, no, I'm not working. We can keep going. I play, I play safety. I'm a, I'm a safety. Yes, I am a professional football player. <laughs> do I want to? Do I want to join the Seahawks? I mean, if they if they call me, I, I definitely take a look at it. But. Um, Every, regardless of what happens, it just ha it, whatever team called, it just has to make sense. Okay. And there's a lot that goes into that. Um, you know, it, it's a, I think it's a dream for everybody to play at that high level. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody, a lot of us, we don't understand what it takes to get there. Can you explain to us like what you have to go through to get to that? Um, okay, explain what does it take to get um, to the top pretty much because the NFL is the highest level of professional football, but whether it be basketball, tennis, soccer, whatever it is that um, you play, it's, number one, it's not easy. And it kind of becomes your lifestyle. It kind of, it kind of consumes you. When you see successful people, you know, there's a, um, there's a saying that it takes 10,000 hours if someone wants to be successful in doing something. Um, so you got to put that time in and from a young age just playing all the time just playing non-stop um, it's definitely not easy especially when it starts to become competitive because I wasn't even the best player on my high school football team and it was something where I just had to continuously outwork people I'm not one of those people who I mean I'm not super tall or big I'm a little guy I'm, uh, I'm undersized and from my position they say I'm slow and from my position, they say I'm, I'm, I'm weak. And from my position, they say I'm not explosive enough. So when you have all these negatives about you can't do this, you have to you know, be able to find that within you to, that kind of that like feeds the fuel so you can, you can overcome that. So it's, I mean, it's not easy. There's tons of things. There's, um, there's different relationships, managing relationships, coaches, parents. Um, different things like that, being able to be recruited, um, playing where, 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 where you're playing, how you perform, 
there, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, but in the end, it's all about the self and the self-determination. And you have to really, you know, you really have to really understand your chances. Like, I love basketball. I realized I wasn't that good at basketball. And I was short. So I just said, well, maybe I should try football. So I started putting them all into football. I had a realistic chance there. And even at my high school, more people were getting recruited for football than they were for basketball. So I said, I got a realistic chance going the football route. So you, you got to be real with yourself. You can't be, you know, a 40-year-old guy that say, I'm in the gym grinding, you know, hashtag rise and grind, and you think you're about to be a rookie in the NFL. It's not, be real, it's not going to happen, right? So there has to be some self-truth. Like me, I, I know I'm not a 4-3 guy. So I have to figure out a way to how I can come up with different techniques. So if I'm playing against a 4-3 guy, I can guard him. So you gotta, you gotta be real with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, the hardest, the hardest Ramadan fast, um, let's see, it was the hardest Ramadan fast, man, in all honesty, I've actually had some pretty, I mean, I'm not going to call them easy because they're, you know, there's difficult periods, but they haven't been like, like over, over, overwhelming. I know my brother, he had some overwhelming ones. I mean, he's down there in Arizona. You know, and it, it hits during training camp, it's, you know, pretty bad. But for, for myself, I mean, my first year with the Vikings, first kind of year or two, um, Ramadan came towards the beginning of the season. So it was kind of out of training camp, so I kind of just didn't tell anybody. I just kind of went about my business. And then when they found out I was fasting, then they helped me during training camp. But we had, it was kind of scary. Probably my third year was probably most difficult. But it was, um, how many like it was? It was just things happened to where it was it was workable. It was workable. And then this past year was crazy because we had uh, eight o'clock practices during training camp, which is unheard of. Typically, they save them for like three o'clock in the middle of the heat. But also, it was cold. Like it was probably like fifty degrees, overcast. Which typically during training camp it was like ninety-seven degrees, humid. So how many like a lot of taking care of me um, every Ramadan I've had and I've had some of my best performances during the month of Ramadan as well. Into my social life? Is it, is it distracting from it? Yeah. I mean, when they look at this guy, it's like, oh, your dad's a football player. That's something he got to deal with, not me, right? <laughs> or they look at my wife, like, oh, you're married to She was like, and? And like, it's just a, you know, he's a guy. So, it, I mean, it, it does, but it's something that um, they have to deal with, and it's a different, it's kind of it's different from what I've experienced because people treat me a certain way because I play football, but for them, it, it, it's, just, it's just different, but yeah, it does. It does. Is there any? So, um, you know, you, you give a lot of positive feedback when you talk to other players and coaches about your experiences with the song and things like this. Do you ever get like negative feedback? I know sometimes you gotta watch out what you say in the media, things about like maybe like your personal beliefs and things like that. Do you ever see that? Yeah, it, it ever interferes with that where something might come negative from what you might say or from your religious beliefs? Um, we, we all know there's, uh, you know, Islamophobes everywhere and people are just always out there, always out there to get us or try to debate us or argue, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But the thing that's cool about the media, the thing that's cool about social media is regardless of what they ask me, I get to control the message. So if I went on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and start saying all this random stuff, they can jump on it. But if I just, you know, kind of stay consistent with my message, there's no story. If they ask me about something, oh, 
have you heard about this? What are your thoughts about this? And I give them, oh, you know, we played it. We played it. We played a great game. You know, all praises due to God. Um, I'm blessed to be a part of this whole And just give them that. There's no story. But when you feed into the questions, when they stir up that emotion and you let, now it's a huge, huge story. You know what I mean? Um, and it gets blown out of proportion. So I haven't really got gotten much negative feedback because even if someone has a specific opinion about Islam or Muslims because of what they see on the TV, when they look at me, they're like, that dude's totally different. So he doesn't fit in that category with, you know, with the constant images I'm barraged by, by the TV. How long do you play football? How, like, on a daily basis? So, so, so right now it's kind of the off season. Um, so I'll probably work out two hours, two hours a day. During the season, we're in the building probably from eight to eight to six. So either we're doing walkthroughs, we're doing workouts, we're doing we're at practice, we're doing meetings, we're always doing something. So it's a it's a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's not like we just show up on Sundays and just get out there and just like we like we playing street ball, run to the car, turn around. It is not like that. You got to put in a lot of work. Um, I've he asked, have I met any other Muslim professional athletes? Um, outside of my brother, I've met uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Are you guys familiar with him? No, mm -hmm. yeah, the older older guys we know. Like when we was growing up, we was like, you know, that's the man. He was, he was a basketball player. He played for he was in the NBA for I think about seven years. Um, the longest thing I, I believe he had was with the Denver Nuggets. He was a sharpshooter. Um, so I met Muhammad Abdul, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf uh, a few times actually now, and I've met a younger brother by the name of Salim Hakim, um, Oz Hakim's younger brother. If you guys remember Oz, he played for the for the Rams. I, I met him actually when he came on a workout to Kansas City. Um, but there's still there's still a couple that inshallah I, I definitely would like to meet this off season because you know now there's now that people you know more of the foreign born community has been here and even for um, the African American community, generations of Islam have been here. They're starting to become more and more professional athletes that are Muslim. So I would, shall I would like to have a chance to meet them. Little guy right here. Uh, shall I will take uh, three more questions and then uh, you know you guys can come up and say salam to the brother. Three more questions. My guy right here in the in the in the green in the green goofy. Mohsen. Um, how long do you play football? Um, I Go ahead. I become a professional player. I had to work very, very hard. It's an extremely rigorous process um, where you get scouted nonstop, and then we finally got the we finally got the opportunity um, to go to the Vikings training camp, and then I had to I had to beat out uh, a bunch of other players in order to get a, a roster spot. Oh, okay. Um, did did any of the sisters have any questions? <laughs> no questions. Okay, I don't. I don't want to be neglecting anybody. Um, if uh, okay, here we go. Back here. Yep.
That's that's not that's not a question. <laughs> You shouldn't use you shouldn't use profanity in the mask yet. Stop it. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> To this point, I haven't been asked in the media, and I've been thankful about that because I don't want to get nothing blown out of proportion. But I've always been taught and under the impression of, you know, your private parts and your private life is private. So I don't know why, you know, people are insistent on throwing that in other people's faces who don't care what you do and whatever other person that's between you, that person, and God. Ain't got nothing to do with me. So as long as you don't throw it in my face, just just leave me alone. And then even for um, people on my team who are out there with a bunch of women, right? I just say, hey, hey, don't, I mean, don't come in the locker room promoting that stuff or keep it keep it away from me. And they do. They're like, oh, Hussein's around. We just, they change the topic. Or they'd be showing stuff and they'd be like, oh, you know. No. So for me, it was just like, that's your private life. You keep that private. There's no need to just throw it and keep shoving it in, you know, in everybody else's faces. So, okay, we got a we got a sister back here. How do I manage? She asks, "How do I manage to stay away from the haram?" In all honesty, I go home. Like, man, if you, like, people be like, hey, you want to come hang out? No, because I know what you into, and I know what that leads to. I'm, I'm, I'm straight. I'm going home. So, you know, then I go home and shoot basketball with this guy, or, I mean, we, we, can, we can do stuff, or my daughter, she loves to do all kinds of stuff. She loves to teach me new things and do stuff like that, and I hang out with my wife, so. But, yeah, going home or just surrounding yourself with, um, like-minded individuals, like-minded people. Because for myself, there hasn't been a lot of Muslims in the locker room. So I find uh, friends who are like Christians, but who kind of have a walk Do they treat you of a, hmm? Do they treat you in, in what way? No, they, in, in all honesty, most people, they don't, they just don't know. You know, they're just, in all honesty, they're really ignorant to, to the truth. So for me, we just talk and they just ask me, well, what about this? What about this? How is this? How is that? And I just, I just tell them. Like, I don't debate them. I don't get angry. I just say, no, this is how it is. So for me, I surround myself with those individuals, like some of my best friends, uh, Eric Frampton. I've been uh, knowing him since 2003 uh, at Washington State, and we played together in Minnesota. He's a Christian. And... Uh, Another one of my good friends, Asher Allen, he's a Jehovah Witness. Another one of my good friends, uh, Quentin Demps, he's a strong Christian. And these are people that, although, you know, they don't live by la ilaha illallah Muhammad al-Rasulullah, inshallah one day they will. But these are people that if I hang out with them, they're not going to take me to the haram because they're, they're staying away from it themselves. So even if you can't surround yourself with Muslims, Surround yourself with like-minded people, with morally upright people. Um, let's do one more, one more question. Any other? Your hand is like burning. Look at his shoulder. He's using two hands. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you guys eat fried chicken for lunch? <laughs> he asked, you know what? He actually we eat fried chicken for lunch. So, so a funny thing about that is, on a daily basis we don't. Okay, on a daily basis we don't. But on travel days, so we're in Kansas City. Let's say we was coming up here to play Seattle. The rookies they gotta go. They gotta go up by Popeyes. That's that's kind of the thing. The rookies they 
You gotta, you gotta have a chicken ready. You gotta have a chicken, you gotta have a biscuits, you gotta have everything. It's kind of a, a, a rookie thing. When I was in Minnesota, they used to make us buy uh, like buffalo shrimp and uh, grilled flatbread pizza, some expensive stuff that I used to get mad about. But um, but yeah, but on a daily basis, no. But on traveling days, them rookies are gonna have that fried chicken. All right, All right that was it. Um, Zakla Kaya, thank you guys for you know sharing this time with me. I really, I really appreciate it. Ten OD.